Hey guys, welcome back to the Frosting Artist channel. In this video, we're going to go over the tools you'll need when using either my uh, Frosting Artist stencils that you can find in my shop or any stencils that you may already have and you aren't quite sure where to start tool-wise. So first off, I'm going to go over your spatula. I always use just a small silicone spatula and this will be to apply your icing to your stencil. This one I just found on Amazon. I'll have links for all these tools in the description so you can just jump down there when you're done with this video. So to compare, this one is one that I just found at the dollar store. So if you don't want to, on Amazon usually you can find like packs of five or whatever for your your spatulas. If you don't want to buy that many, just jump over to your dollar store and they actually sell these. This one's a Betty Crocker. Uh, and you, you may find different ones at your store, but these ones work just as well. You want something that is fairly stiff to frost with on the end. That's why I like these smaller ones. The larger ones of these actually are very flimsy and they bend very easily on the ends. So the smaller, the better because they're more stiff. Uh, another important tool will be your scraper. This one is the Wilton Icing Smoother. Uh, this is my favorite one to use. It is a bit large, so if you're not a cake decorator and you only do cookies, it may seem a little bit on the large side, but uh, in the long run you will appreciate the length of this because some of the stencils do require you to have quite a long edge there. It makes it a lot easier. And also, even if you're just frosting the smaller designs, I like this one because I can frost across one of those stencils, and then when I go clean that stencil, I don't have to worry about cleaning my uh, scraper just yet, because if I scrape along that side, I can just flip it over and use the other side. So you can get several different swipes out of this before you have to go clean it. Uh, so that's really a really nice uh, feature to a, a longer scraper. If you don't want to go the Wilton route, something along the lines of it, like a pastry cutter like this one works totally fine. Same idea. You just can scrape it across and it'll give you that nice smooth surface. It is a bit shorter, um, so you, you would have to clean this one more often, but it fits good in your hand just the same and it's the same idea gives you that nice straight edge. You just want something with a straight edge. I prefer the metal because it doesn't get uh, dents in it and it doesn't scrape up as easily as a plastic one. I have 3D printed scrapers before and they work just fine, but the metal is definitely a better quality to go with. Uh, another thing, this one's just a cookie scribe. Uh, you will want to have something that you can scrape gently with. If you have finer details on your stencils, sometimes the icing will push underneath those fine details and you can go back through with your, your scribe and you can scrape along those lines. That way it pushes the icing away. And you've probably seen in some of my videos I do this. I've done it with toothpicks before I got my cookie scribe. It's the same idea. I got this one at the dollar store again. Same with this scraper, the pastry cutter. So all three of these items I found at my dollar store. So if you're looking to go on a budget, get some affordable tools, definitely check out your dollar store. Toothpicks work just as great as your cookie scribe. Same concept, you can push the icing back to where it needs to be. All right, and another thing you will need I like to use, this is just the anchor uh, measuring cup. It's the five ounce. I like this one because I can also use it when I make my icing. So if you are using the recipe that I send with my stencils, uh, this is the perfect one. It, it has five ounces for the water. You'll have your six tablespoons of meringue powder and it all just fits in this cup. And then when I'm done making my icing, I fill it up about halfway with water and I just have this little eyedropper. It's just a glass one. So it's completely food safe. You can find these on Amazon. You can also find 
they have dropper bottles. So they're like little squeeze bottles with a dropper on the end. You could fill those up with some water and use that instead. But I like this setup. It's a little bit easier just to have one cup that you use both for your icing, but also to add water to your icing later to get the right consistency. You'll also want a mixing bowl. So this can be any bowl from your house, honestly. You can just go in the cupboard and grab a bowl. I prefer a glass one. It's a little bit easier with color mixing. Same with your spatulas. I really like the black spatulas. Uh, it's sometimes hard to find black spatulas uh, on Amazon. So I just kind of go with whatever color I can find sometimes. But for your bowl, you definitely want to have either white or a glass bowl. And because when your icing is sitting in your bowl against a vibrant color, let's say you have a red bowl, it would be very difficult to match uh, like a blue with your design that you're trying to do if it's right up against that red. So this way you can at least hold it away from your colored spatula and you can kind of hold it away and know exactly what color you're getting there. So that's why I kind of go with my glass bowl. Uh, you'll want to have containers. So this container I've had since like I started this adventure six years ago, it's lasted that long. This is my main container. You'll see that I, in my videos that I put my my whole batch of icing fits perfectly in this container. Um, this is a seven and a half cup, um, 1.77 liters. So that's the size of this. And so when I make my icing, it pretty much fills up about to this line here. Almost the whole thing is full of my icing. And I can keep that in here until it's gone and I need to make my next batch. If I am not going to be icing anything for several days, I'll put this in the fridge. If it's going to be longer, I'll throw it in the freezer. Since it's airtight, it keeps that icing perfect for your next, your next uh, project. Another thing that I like to have on hand are these ones. I'll put these ones in the description the link for these. This one, I don't have a link for it because I bought it so long ago. I'm not even sure. I think I got it like at Costco <laughs> uh, in a big set. So it's been so long on that one. <clears throat> but any any larger container will work perfect. This one right here, I'll have, <clears throat> sorry, I'll have the description. Uh, sorry, the link in the description. This one is a 3.2 cups, 760 milliliter. So any, any container, honestly, a lot of you already have containers on hand, so you can just go into your cupboard again and pull out your containers. You don't have to buy uh, specific tools, so anything that you can find that works the same as these will work perfectly fine. The last thing I want to go over are my colors. You don't need a whole ton of colors. <clears throat> when I first started out, I had, I, I was buying all the colors that you could think of and they have all the different shades and blends and mixes and I just ended up finding out that if I just follow the basic color theory of primary colors, it worked totally fine for me. So I always have these colors on hand and these are the same ones that I will be teaching in my color matching videos. I will just be using these basic colors. So as you can see, I have red, yellow, and blue. Those are my primary colors. I'll have more videos that go into more detail on color theory and color matching for those of you that uh, aren't too sure in that area and need a little bit more instruction. But you have your primary colors. I always have those on hand. The pink, this one, helps with getting your red a really good shade, dark shade of red. So we'll go over that in some videos. And then the other two colors that I have to have on hand are black and brown. And these are the colors that I use to get my my other colors a deeper color. The, the brown gives you more of an earthy color and the black gives you more of that grayish purple. So these are the 
the uh, six main colors that I use for all of my designs. So every design you see, it was made with these colors only. I don't have all the fancy colors anymore. Like you can see for sale online all over the place, you'll get like a 20 pack of colors. I just have these six and all my designs are made with them. Like I said, I'll have more videos that come out and talk you through how I color match with just those colors. The last thing that you will want to have, it is not 100% necessary, you do not have to have one of these, but it does make your dry time a lot quicker, is a desktop fan. So this one um, does not tilt downwards. I do have to prop this up on something. So if you do buy one, make sure you find one that you can tilt down towards your table. Uh, and all you do is, you, and whenever you frost a layer, you're just going to turn this fan on and just let it blow onto your icing and it cuts your your drying time down quite a bit but that is basically all the tools that you will need for using the stencils if you want to follow along with my videos um, and like I said these are great tools to have for any stencils so if you already have stencils that you've bought from another shop you are more than welcome to follow along in these videos to get stenciling tips and tricks for those as well. Yeah, that is basically it. I hope that helps you get started on your frosting with stencils. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.